Welcome to another episode of Ultima Game State. In previous episodes, I looked at the infantry and the vehicles in Legion Imperialis. So today, I'm going to take a shot at looking at the Knights and Titans. I have spent some time looking through the profiles to better understand what the options are, and I've gone through the forums to see what other players think. I've not fielded anything yet beyond a few knights myself, so all of this is very much in the abstract. That said, I've got a couple of conclusions that I think make sense to me, and I would like to share them. I'm sure there's a bunch of things I'm going to get wrong, so please, if you spot anything, or if you get any notions yourself, please do post into comments. And uh, yeah, if you're listening to this, have a quick check through the comments just to see if there are any additional insights that people have added to it. These are the profiles I'm going to be looking at today. Starting on the left, we've got the Questorus Knight, the Serastus Knight, Warhound Titan, Reaver Titan, Warlord Titan, and Warmaster Titan. So I am skipping the Acastus Knight, the Direwolf, the Warbringer, the Warlord Sinister, and the Warmaster Iconoclast Titans. My hope is that the lessons from the main Titans and Knights will give you what you need to know to make your own assessments of the ones I missed. Let's start with the Knights. The first thing to understand is that these are basically just fancy vehicles. There are no special rules unique to Knights. The closest you will find is the Ion Shield trait, which only appears on Knights. This is kind of like an invul save, but rather than ignore armor penetration, it reduces it slightly. So AP minus one is treated as AP zero, AP two or three is treated as AP one, and anything worse than that is treated uh, as minus two AP. And no matter what, it can't make it get worse than a six plus save. Our first profile is the Questorus Knight. This comes in a box of three, each with a different weapon set. The old version of this box had the arms for one each of Durant, Paladin, and Warden. So that's Reaper Chainsword on each of them, with either a Thermal Cannon, a Rapid Fire Battle Cannon, or an Avenger Gatling Cannon. This kit was then upgraded with an extra sprue, which added six gauntlets, three melted guns, and three rocket pods. The gauntlets are obviously a melee option, the melted guns are a hull mounted option to replace the heavy stubber, while the rocket pods are a five point upgrade to slap a rocket launcher on top. It's move 8, it's got a save of 3+, plus, and it's got 3 wounds. So it's a little like a Kratos, but with an extra wound. Morale is great at 2+, plus, and it's got an insane close assault factor of plus 8. All but the Crusader option have a melee weapon with rend, so straight away it is looking like a really good melee unit. When looking over the weapon options, I think it is important to consider whether you could get a better version of this by spending those points on a tank instead. So... You're spending 180 for a single Questorus Knight. You could get to Kratos for 150. So yeah, the goal here is to you know see what we can do with these knights that would be better than just taking tanks instead. In this case, it does look like we can rush across the battlefield and slam into a tank unit for some close combat and then try kill multiple tanks that way. That hopefully will earn some points back quickly. With that in mind, Anything on the range options should work fine. The Thermal Cannon has Demolisher, which might take down a building, which could be fun. The Battle Cannon has excellent range, 28 inches, while the Gatling Cannon has five dice and rapid fire, so it could really rip through some infantry. But we have to keep thinking about how are we going to make back our points with these. Our second knight is the Serastus at 215 points. This is a little bit faster than the Questorus uh, with nine movement, it's got a, the same save, wounds, and morale. There is considerable jump into close assault factor, though, going up to 11. All of the options of this knight have rend, so we're definitely looking at 3d6 plus 11, and then it gets an extra 2 if they charge due to the Furious Charge special rule. The various options do switch around the melee weapons as well as the range options. The Warblade and Chain Fist are mechanically the same, but the Shock Lance does have Reach, which lets it extend its melee range by 2 inches to attack more units. With that crazy CAF, the Serastus can keep killing units for a considerable chunk of time. For the range options, you can get a Flamer Cannon that ignores cover, great against garrison troops, and that comes with the twin heavy bolters with point defense. Then you've got the Bolt Cannon with 4 dice and rapid fire, which should get a good number of shots at targets. And last is you've got that Iron Shield, which isn't great with only 6 inch range, but it does come with the Lance, so there is merit to it. The core box for Titanicus has two of the Knight Lancers, so I'm a bit of a fan of them. It focuses on what they're good at, even though you will lose out in a turn or two as you try to get them in place. 
but hopefully that extra reach will um, effectively double the killing potential once you get him into close combat. In both cases, so the Questorus and Sarasas, these knights seem to be focused on melee, but they are vulnerable to long-range tanks or aircraft picking them off in the first couple of turns. So do try keep them in some cover as best you can while they approach. All right, moving over to Titans proper. They do have a ton of special rules. Their movement is a little bit awkward, so you will need to plan ahead to make sure they end up at the right place with the right facing. They have special rules around buildings, so I mean, as they are essentially buildings themselves, you kind of need to. When they're adjacent, uh, they are considered to be engaged with the building, but not with the troops inside. That's a partially a bit of a downside, as with the knights, you could run up to a building and everything inside it is considered to be in melee then, so you can reaper chainsword all the troops inside. The titans, though, are more likely to use their weapons or even just their bulk to try collapse the building. For this move, they actually get a free attack once per round. So if they're adjacent to a building, uh, that's an extra bonus. Troops inside a collapsing building have to make a save and those who fail die. Nice and simple. Titans can split fire and that applies to both their weapons, which can target different targets, and also to the dice within the weapons. So if you can have a Vulcan Mega Bolter and a Plasma Blast Gun on your hand, you can take that Plasma Blast Gun and aim it at a tank attachment, but you can also take that Vulcan Mega Bolter's 10 dice and split it across multiple different infantry attachments. This gives the Titans a lot of flexibility in fire, and as they have, or tend to have, a lot of big guns, it actually front loads a lot of damage into a single activation. So you could potentially take out multiple enemy threats before they even have a chance to activate. Like Ion Shields, the Void Shields are not a rule inherent to Titans, but they all do have them. While there are active Void Shields, any hits are first assigned to them. If the attack is an AP0, it is completely ignored. Any hits after that, deplete the Void Shield by one. So it's a buffer that you have to get through before you start actually doing damage. As a kicker, these void shields can reignite. Each turn, on average, 50% of the missing shields are going to restore, and you're going to have to get through them all again the next turn. As we'll see, that can vary from 2 of the Warhound all the way up to the absolute bonkers 12 on the Warmaster. That's a lot of hits you need to get through before you can even start doing damage. And that Warmaster has 7 wounds that you need to get through after those 12 hits, and then they are saving on a one plus. If you don't manage to do all of that, then you're probably going to see six shields reignite on the War Master, and you're going to have to get through it all over again. Due to the nature of these void shields, often you will need to do the mental calculation turn one to decide whether you can take down that enemy type. Due to the attrition in the game on turn two and later, you're going to have a little bit less firepower available so you're less likely to be able to get that Titan down and it's probably gonna stay up for the rest of the game. The first Titan we're looking at is the Warhound. You will have two of these from the starter backs and they are 330 points each. So the game would need to be at least 1,100 points before you could even field one. It is armed with two weapons from the list and you can double up. The kit can and should be built with magnets uh, to let you switch in and out the weapons as you need. At seven move, it is fast for a Titan, and with just two Void Shields and four wounds, it is definitely killable, despite that two plus save. It has a great close assault factor, but as it doesn't have a rend weapon, you're probably better off leaving that to the Knights. Here, and with the later Titans, that high close assault factor is basically defensive to make sure they'll get swarmed. Again, we do need to mentally compare what we're getting to just bringing a bunch of tanks, as 330 points is a big investment. The recommended loadout for Titanicus was always a Mega Bolter to take out Void Shields and a Plasma Blast Gun to finish things off. For Legion Imperialis, you're probably more interested in the Inferno Gun for templating masses of infantry or the Conversion Beam Dissoluter, which with two shots hitting on two pluses and a minus four AP is probably the most reliable kill shot you're going to get. That it has Demolisher is definitely a bonus. Now, 
one of the things you have to factor in is you will get a certain number of uh, weapon options in the plastic kit. You're probably going to be going with those. The fancier weapons, you can get them. They are available on Forge or oh no, on the Warhammer.com website, uh, but they tend to be resin and can be a little bit expensive. So while there might be, in theory, a best weapon, um, that conversion beam dissoluter, I think, is one of those ones that you're going to have to pay a little bit extra to get them in resin. Uh, but yeah, the key thing here is that the Warhounds are definitely killable. Those two Void Shields are, aren't really much of a buffer, and if your opponent can get 330 points worth of a Titan dead, you know they've definitely got some value in there. So probably need to have a plan on how you're going to use your Titan, and then be a little bit cautious with it. It's not as uh, invincible as maybe some of the bigger ones are. Speaking of bigger, the next Titan to look at is the Reaver, which stats-wise is just a little bit of an upgrade, but it really matters. So it's move six, which is one less. The save is still two plus, and the wounds have just gone up by one to five. The close assault factor has gone up by two, but again, that's probably just defensive. Uh, the void shields have doubled to four, which is a small difference, but should have a big impact. Even if we lose all four shields on turn one, we're going to get probably two of them back on average next turn. This is going to cost you for 15 points, though. So we're looking at 1,500 points game before you can field one. For weapons, you get two arm weapons and a carapace weapon, which is on top. The arm weapon can be doubled up. And again, these all and can, these all can and should be magnetized so you can switch between them when needed. For the arm weapons, the laser blaster and the gatling blaster are very similar, with the laser blaster trading an extra dice for an extra AP and five more range. I don't think I'd say one is necessarily better than the other, as it'll really depend on what targets you're going after. If you're looking to kill knights or titans, the volcano cannon is probably your best option. With a 2 plus to hit and a minus 4 AP, there's a good chance you're doing that point of damage. And with engine killer 3 against super heavy tanks, knights or titans, that damage is upgraded to a 4. That outright kills a knight. Against a super heavy tank, it is going to get a kill, but it's not going to splash over to others. Against a Titan, you do want the shields to be already down, but it will kill a Warhound right out and put a significant dint in any of the others. The Melta does have Demolisher, but you'll probably just crash into buildings to destroy them. The Chain Fist and the Power Fist do have Wrecker, which is like Engine Killer for buildings, uh, but again, I suspect fitting for ranged is going to work out a lot better. The go-to Carapace weapon seems to be the Apocalypse Missile Launcher, which has 100 range and heavy barrage. This means you can target anything, even if you don't have line of sight to it, although it will be at a minus one to hit. That it's heavy barrage, rather than just barrage, means you can target a building to try to destroy it. The other big option for a carapace weapon is the warp missile, which did get an errata recently. The warp trait means it ignores all saves, including warp shields. The dice are listed as SP, or special, so you roll dice equal to the number of stands in the detachment you're targeting. There was a section saying you got to roll for each wound left on a Titan or a Knight, which made it a real one-shot Titan killer, but they changed that to one dice for a Knight or Titan. The limited trait means you can only fire this weapon once, so it is a guaranteed wound whenever you can draw line of sight to, but it's probably only going to be working once. Certainly interesting, it will basically kill a detachment of one wound models, if you point at it, but no longer the must-have Titan killer it was before the errata. The next Titan to look at is the War Lord. Slower at five, one more wound, but importantly two more void shields. So that's six minus AP hits before you can start to do damage then you need to beat that two plus armor save and get six of those wounds down before the shield regen. So doable, but it'll take a lot of concentrated fire and some pre-planning. Luckily, these Titans are big and they need big buildings to hide behind. A lot of the Titanicus players uh, generally built three-story buildings to try get some cover for their warlords. But the Legion and Imperialis players are much more likely to spread that terrain box out with single story structures. I guess ally players are in the suburbs while Titanicus is downtown. Tons of weapons again, but this time we have some standard inbuilt ones. So we have the bolt cannon turrets and the las cannon turrets. 
These are all point defense and basically are there to stop Titan getting swarmed. It's relatively short range, but nice to have. Again, we get to pick from a weapon on each arm and a carapace weapon. Although in this case, the carapace weapon on top comes as a paired set. To a certain extent, the Warlord is similar to the Reaver. Big, more expensive, and with bigger guns. The Volcano Cannons can kill a Reaver without shields and will do good work against another Warlord. The Plasma and Gatling weapons are good all-rounders, while the Conversion Beamer does similar, but with a shorter range and demolisher for buildings. Then you've got the Graviton, it gets the Graviton Pulse, which amongst other things does extra damage to buildings. For the Carapace, we do have Missile Launchers, which are the same as Reaver, but double the dice. We also have the option for um, more all-purpose weapons like paired Gatling Blasters, paired Turbo Lasers, and the Mega Bolter Array. I'd love to give you a particular loadout and say that's the one, but I suspect the best loadout will change depending on what you're up against. If you're going up against other Titans, you'll need something to strip Void Shields, and you'll need something to pack that final punch. Unfortunately, a single Titan can't do all that, as the defender gets to pick the order of the hits assigned. So if you had a Gatling Blaster Array and two Volcano Cannons, those cannon shots would just get assigned to the Void Shields, and then the, blaster, the Gatling Blaster Array would then be peppering away. So similarly, if you're packing Titan Killers, but you don't have Titan Targets, then your 600 point Titan is going to pop a few tanks and not much else. You, not great if you're only going to be doing you know single points of damage. There are two Titan kits currently. One comes with double volcano cannons and a set of Apocalypse missile launchers, while the other has a Power Claw, Plasma Annihilator, and twin laser blasters. Weapon kits from each box are available separately, but it does cost about half the price of getting a Warlord box. Then the rest of the weapons are available as resin. Although, again, do be careful you don't accidentally get the 40k scale ones, as the pictures do look the same, but the prices are very, very different. The last Titan I want to look at is the War Master. This is a chunky 750 points. So to fit that 30% allowance, you need to have at least 2,500 points. There are a lot of inbuilt weapons with this Titan. Missile launchers, bolt cannons, last cannons, and other defense batteries, uh, or bombards. Then you add in two shoulder options from the list, and you have those two massive Caesarean plasma destructors. That's a ton of firepower. I'm not sure it necessarily matters which of the shoulder options you go for, but the Inferno guns will be great against garrison troops, so they're definitely worth looking at. The key part about the War Master here is that the Void Shields are now up to 12. How on earth do you kill something like that? It's an absolute monster. Okay, if you've made it this far, hopefully you've got a bit of a better idea of what we're looking at with Titans. I think I do, even if I don't necessarily know what I would run. Titans look great, but they are super, super expensive, and they need to do a lot of work to justify your points back. If you field one, then there's always a risk your opponent will take it down turn one, and you're suddenly out a ton of points. If your opponent brings one and you don't have a way to deal with it, then it might just maul its way across the battlefield. It's not going to contest objectives, but it can sit on one and kill everything around it. If you do decide to take one, you need to work out what you want to do with it. Field it with the right weapons and focus on getting that one job done. It does have some nice advantages. Mostly, it can pack a lot of punch into a single activation that can neutralize enemy detachments before they have a chance to activate. Honestly, though, I think those points would probably be better spent on more flexible units. Infantry to hold objectives and tanks to do damage. Although the Titan weapons are impressive, you can probably get more damage per points if you just invest it in tanks. Chances are you'll have the other half of your core box, which you could run as that 30%, whether that's the Solar Auxilia or the Legion Force. Including a Titan definitely makes your force a little bit more manageable, though, which I think isn't something people have often considered. Even a relatively no, low number of points in a game of Legion Imperialis ends up being a ton of bases scattered across the board. More importantly with Titans, though, they are a fun option, and they should make for some memorable games. So I think the I think if you want to be super competitive, I probably wouldn't go for Titan at all. Um, yeah, I'd probably focus on more infantry, 
because there's only so much you can do with one of those titans. Now, it might be worth your while considering how you would deal with an enemy titan if one does appear. You need to have a lot of minus ones. Uh, anything below minus one AP, so an AP zero or lower, or lower isn't going to strip any of the shields, isn't going to do anything at all. So that is something to keep in mind. Yeah, it's probably worth thinking of a way to deal with one. Uh, but if your opponent has invested that many points into a Titan, chances are they'll be weak elsewhere. And maybe focusing on everything else and killing the rest of their army is probably going to get you a, 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 a victory in the long term. But yeah, they're in the game. They certainly look gorgeous. Uh, I'm very fond of my Titanicus models. I still have a Warlord to build. That is uh, next on my list. Um, but yeah, as I said, I haven't had a chance to feel them in combat yet, so please do post some comments if you had and tell me what you think about them. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Each week I put up a new video talking about one of Games Workshop's specialist games. The goal is always to try and make the best possible two-player experience. If this is something you'd find interesting, please subscribe to the channel and comment to let me know what you'd like to see in future.